Update! And it's been another week. And it's been another week. It's been another week. That's what happens if I don't mute happens. the audio. In last week's update, the 200th update, I asked in the comments what was your favorite update. And for many of you, you like it when I talk about movies, in addition to updating you about the show, which I will do at the end of this, because today we are going to talk about why move the camera. And not just like the purpose of it, but motivated camera movement. There's a big difference between moving the camera and moving the camera for a reason. Let's talk about camera movement in general. What is the most often used reason for moving the camera? To follow a character. That's basically why camera movement started. Way back when movies were shot like plays because everyone was used to seeing a scene from one angle, you know, all this time. Can you play the piano? I can and sing at the same time. And then if you had this scene and then people walked over there, you just moved the camera with them to keep them in frame. I had to use the Dinah clip because Eliza thinks she's amazing. And she is. Still, the main reason cameras are moved is to follow the actors. Whether the camera is just panning from a fixed position to keep them in frame, whether it's dollying with them. The very act of the camera moving makes it feel like there's momentum in the story. The fact that your characters are moving forward means that they are going somewhere. It implies that the story is on its way to a position. That's fair game. TV shows do it all the time. Walks look good on camera. They give the illusion of the story moving forward. So one of the main reasons to move the camera is to keep the actors in frame. Unless you are Michael Bay. Then you are moving the camera because the camera is rolling. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Michael Bay today. We are going to talk about directors who, in my opinion, do it well and the reasons why they do it. One of the things that is very important to talk about is the always moving camera, not Michael Bay style. I'm talking about handheld. Handheld camera keeps things always in motion. It makes it feel very real. It makes it feel very present. It makes it feel as if reality is happening. That is the idea behind handheld camera. When people see a handheld camera, they associate it with reality. And some people use it to amazing effect, like Alfonso Cuaron. He does these hugely long shots, all handheld. But it's also a very limiting choice. I'll come back to the limitations of the handheld look after we talk about these following directors, though. The more interesting aspect of camera movement is when the characters aren't moving and the camera is. Sometimes camera moves introduce a scene. It's a transitional thing. Like, you'll see a camera far back from a person moving in toward a person, and that is introducing them. You know, it's an introduction to the scene. We were back here, now we're moving into this thing. Transitional camera move. Paul Thomas Anderson did that a lot of Magnolia. Introduced a lot of characters by zooming toward them. Another way of transitioning into a scene is the side move. You start and move around a corner to discover a character. It's like you were over here, now we're moving into this thing. Transitional move. A lot of movies also like start the movie by mm -hmm. coming far back, usually coupled with a crane move, and moving down, like mm -hmm. taking you from the world at large <laughs> into this one story here. Now we're moving into this, you know? It gets you adjusted, shows you your space in an environment, and pulls you down into this thing. Okay? That's the introductory or transitional camera move. Very useful, very helpful. Perhaps the most interesting thing of all, to me, is when the motion of the camera is conveying a feeling instead of focusing on the fact that you're moving through space. I'm going to talk about some directors who do this fantastically. You cannot get away from Steven Spielberg with this thing. Spielberg is the best at the slow push in, you know? He's just the greatest at it. And a lot of times too, he'll be pushing in and kind of tilting the camera up to keep them in frame. It also changes the perspective on the character from where you're almost eye level with them, but then when you come in, it seems like you're looking up at them. It gives them this greater sense of importance and it is gorgeous. That push in really kind of makes everything feel like something is building and you are about to see something spectacular. That's the Spielberg way. One of the dudes who's really, his camera is always going, Wes End. Anderson. Paul Thomas Anderson, Wes Anderson, the Anderson boys, you know? They're actually not related. But Wes Anderson, what he's been doing lately, like astounding. If you, if you look at the opening of Moonrise Kingdom, what he does is he builds these sets where there is a wall missing and the audience is given the ability to move through these walls seamlessly and discover the characters in their environment surrounded by amazing production design that tells you more about the characters and shows you everybody's place in relation to each other. That is a camera that tells a story, man. Good grief. Like, look at this. The crane up. Dude knows how to work the camera, all right? He's establishing relationships and environments all in one moving shot. It's interesting. The Coen brothers, man. Particularly in a movie called Barton Fink. The camera is always creeping. 
it's creeping towards people so slowly. Sometimes it feels like it's building towards something, or sometimes, you know, you're pushing towards an object, but that's not the thing drawing your attention. So then they add a little tilt to it to draw you into something else. Sometimes it is a build towards something really intense and amazing in the case of Barton Fink. The end of that movie is insane. I love that movie. Okay. But the Coen brothers use a moving camera to, to push you this way, push you that way, to guide your eyes, to give you ideas, all right? The camera is an active force in guiding your perception of what's happening. It's really slow. That movie's so slowly paced, but because of the moving camera, it doesn't feel that way because everything feels motivated, pushing you this way or guiding you this way. Really, really amazing. Gotta talk about Fincher. David Fincher, director of Fight Club, uses the camera move for a lot of dynamic things. He likes to show you, especially in Fight Club, he wants to show you a piece of something within a larger construct. The camera's ability to move through things is showing you how things belong in a system or work against a system. And that's amazing. Also, this camera move like kind of blows my mind. It's a wide shot that is static until punched. That punch not only moved him, it moved his world. All right? It changed everything. That is amazing. Fincher does a lot of push-ins and a lot of transitional moves too, but every move is motivated. The reason this has been on my mind is because of the Veronica Mars movie, which I really enjoyed. There are a few problems I had with it. That doesn't, we don't need to talk about that. I love the series. The movie is a great continuation of the series. I'm really excited for whatever Veronica Mars thing comes next because now they don't have to bridge the gap. Now they can move forward from the movie. And I feel like that's gonna feel a lot closer to what we loved about the series than this movie did. And I don't think the movie was very friendly for audiences who weren't familiar with the universe. Maybe, maybe it is. I would like to know your opinion if you saw that movie. But. If you ever see a camera move change direction in mid-shot, like they've set up track and it's going this way, and then in the middle of the shot, it, it just starts moving the other way, that means they just wanted movement and it's unmotivated. I mean, you could make the argument that some conversational shift happens in that moment and that gets the camera moving in the other way to kind of move from this character's perspective to that character's perspective, but it just looks lazy. In a wide shot, moving this way, and all of a sudden it starts moving that way, that's unmotivated movement, and that is bull****. That's just moving a camera to move a camera. If you are going to move the camera, you should be doing it for a purpose. It should be conveying something. That's just my opinion, okay? And this, is, this has just been kind of my rundown on that. Moving camera is one of the most potent tools in a director's bag. Right, Kitty? And the reason that handheld camera shouldn't kind of try to emulate these moves is because it doesn't work the same way. All right, the fact that the camera's in somebody, don't, you're gonna stop my recording. The fact that the camera is in somebody's hands means that the slow push in looks like somebody is stalking toward your actor, moving uncomfortably close to them because that's obvious that that camera is in somebody's hands. And maybe that's just because they use it in horror movies as like a POV thing back in the 70s and 80s. But I think it's just inherent from the idea that a handheld camera makes us realize that somebody is holding that camera. And I broke this rule all the time in the early Pops episodes, and I wish I hadn't. On Pops this week, I broke through on an effect that I was really worried about. Every time I'm trying to do a new look of an effect in the show, it takes a while for me to come up with the, the design of it. So several days this week were just about building the look of, a, of an effect in the show. And now that I know how to do it, I can go through and it's gonna be a lot faster of a process. But that breaking through that wall point is tough. And I did that this week. So still moving forward on Pops. One week from today, Sci-Fi Spectacular. Ugh! That is just a lot of fun. And they're gonna be screening a 50s trailer for Pops that I put together, a one minute 50s trailer. And they're gonna be screening Jack as well. In addition to, that's really cool and all, but the thing that, they're starting the whole festival at around 10, 15, 10 a.m., some, somewhere in there, by screening the Buffy episode, Hush. And that, I'm so excited about. <laughs> that's just gonna be amazing. Watching the Hush episode of Buffy on the big screen with a group of people around is gonna, like, I'm almost the most excited about that. So yeah, thanks for tuning in this week, guys. Those are my thoughts on camera movement, and I just kinda wanted to talk about it, because I've been thinking about unmotivated camera movement, and how it can so easily be done correctly, if you just put a little thought into it. And time, because getting smooth dolly shots takes more time than shooting everything handheld. Like, a lot more time. Thank you, guys. Hope you have a good week. That's the Pops logo. I'm outta here. Take it easy.